Bob and I have been in a long-distance relationship, and it's working thanks to frequent, securely encrypted messages. But Eve, his scheming ex, tries to interfere by intercepting our messages and pretending to be me. Cryptographers to the rescue! What we need is a system identifying the sender by using unique keys to encrypt and decrypt the message. Enter RSA. Ron Rivest, Addie Shamir, and Leonard Adelman were computer scientists at MIT working on a new crypto system. One piece of the puzzle was still missing. How to achieve a one-way function and encryption using a key which can't be reversed with the same key. In April 1977, after a night out drinking together, Rivest was unable to sleep and started to think about their work. He stayed up all night, and by the next morning, he had figured out the missing piece. The algorithm is now known as RSA, the initials of the three inventors' surnames. It is one of the first public key crypto systems and is still widely used for secure data transmission. RSA works as follows. Bob needs to choose two very large prime numbers and multiply them together. He then publishes this number online. He also sends out a public exponent. These numbers are Bob's public key. That is all I need to encrypt my message. If I encode my plain text message as a number, I can convert it into ciphertext with Bob's public key. What's the formula for decrypting this message? Here lies the beauty. Bob also has a private key, for which there is a formula that relies on the prime factors of his public key. The private key decrypts the message. For Bob, deriving his private key is really easy because he knows the factors. But for anyone else, it's extraordinarily difficult to compute the prime factors of any large number. So the private key is only known to Bob and only he can read the message. This method is so secure that it's used for transmitting credit card information online. In fact, if you've used e-banking, there's a good chance that your computer has stored your bank's public key in its memory. Here's another neat little trick. Say, Bob sends me a message. How can I know it's really Bob and not Eve? Well, Bob can use the same mechanism to make a private encryption key and a public decryption key. This reverse mode is called signature. He can now encrypt his message with his private key. That seems a bit stupid, because anybody can decrypt it with his public key. But that's not the point. The point is that I know for certain that Bob wrote that message, because nobody else could have encrypted it with Bob's private key. If his public key unlocks the message, I'm certain that Bob actually wrote it. In other words, it has Bob's digital signature. And how do I know that Bob's key is actually his? After all, everyone can just publish keys on the internet. Here's where the final layer of security comes in. Public Key Infrastructure, or PKI. PKI includes every person and software involved in validating public keys. The validation is done by an independent, trusted company called the Certificate Authority, or CA. Bob will first validate his identity with the CA. The CA will then add their own signature to Bob's public key. They will typically also include an expiration date, after which the certificate needs to be renewed. So when Bob now sends me a message saying, Hey Alice, you can decrypt my message using my public key. I will verify the digital certificate that confirms the key is really Bob's, and not an imposter. RSA is unfortunately a bit more cumbersome than AES, so most websites will use a combination of both. In practice, when we go on a secure website, we will verify each other's identity using RSA. Then, each time we log in, we will exchange a new key using the Diffie-Hellman protocol. We know there is no man in the middle, so there's no doubt the key is shared between us and the website. That means we can go ahead and send AES encrypted messages. It also means I don't have to worry about Eve meddling with my love life. So, my future with Bob is safe. But what about our future children? Will they still be safe online? Or will computers have advanced enough to crack the encryption methods we use today? Find out in the next video.